Prayer means talking to God. Prayer means fellowshipping with God. Prayer means to bear out one's heart to God. I'm sure you know all these definitions of prayer by heart. You must have heard them at one time or another. However, it is not enough to know what prayers mean. How often do you pray? And when you pray, do you pray with every sense of intentionality or just to fulfill all righteousness? In this video, I will tell you what happens when you pray with intent every day. So, ensure you watch this video to the end. How often should believers pray? This is a very important question. We should pray every day. Others think praying once a week, especially when they go to church on Sundays, is just fine. And some others believe that the prayer they say at the beginning of the year is enough to sustain them through the year. To clear all doubts, the Bible answers the question in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Pray without ceasing. The Bible admonishes us to pray continually. This means that you should pray every moment of each waking day. While this may not be possible in the literal sense because you have to go about your daily activities, it requires some measure of intent on your part. It requires that you set time aside every day to pray. It could be 30 minutes, every 6 hours, or whatever works for you. The goal is to remain in communion with God all day long. How do we pray? This is also a very important question. Some people do not know how to pray. They do not know what to say when praying. The disciples of Christ also asked him this question, and he taught them the Lord's Prayer to guide them whenever they pray. The Lord's Prayer contains all the essentials that your prayer should contain. According to the Lord's Prayer, your prayer should include one prayer of gratitude for all God has done for you. It is very important to cultivate the habit of giving thanks to God for all the good things He has done for you and those around you. 2. Pray for God's will to be established in your life. Establishing God's will in your life ensures that things do not go awry, and even if they do, you can always talk to God about it. When praying, you should also ask for God's provision. God has promised to supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You should ask God to fulfill His promise of supplying all needs in your life. The prayer of forgiveness is also integral. Ask God to forgive you for all the times you have disobeyed His word. You might have sinned either knowingly or unknowingly. Ask God, who knows all things, to forgive all your sins. Most importantly, you should pray against temptations. Temptations from the devil will most likely come your way to cause you to derail from the tracks of your Christian journey. You must ask for grace to say no to these temptations when they come. All these should form the basis of your prayers. You can then ask for other things that you need or want, and you can also pray for your loved ones as well. Another way the Bible taught us how to pray is in Philippians 4, 6-7. It says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The point here is to always give thanks before tendering your long list of problems before God. When you pray every day with intent, what happens? 1. It helps you develop a relationship with God. Communication helps foster relationships. Spending time with someone and talking to that person all the time goes a long way in building your relationship with that person. Likewise, spending time with God and talking to Him deepens your relationship with Him. God transforms from a casual acquaintance to a loving father and trusted friend. You become a friend of God just like Abraham. You tell God anything and everything. Likewise, God will not do anything that concerns you without telling you about it first. Only by consciously praying can you reach this level of relationship with God. Furthermore, praying with intent every day helps you understand God's loving nature. 1 John 4, 9 tells us, This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. God is love, and only by fellowshipping with God through prayers do you fully understand the depth of God's love for you. God's love made Him send His only Son into the world so that you might have life through Him. You were dead because of your sins and trespasses. But God in His infinite mercy gave up Jesus to be the atonement for your sins. This sounds like a fable to some people. They think it is a story that never happened and was made up. Praying with intentionality deepens your understanding of the sacrificial love of God. Also, praying intentionally helps you understand your purpose and helps you find direction in life. 
One of the most frustrating things in life is living without a purpose. A person without purpose lives life as it comes to him. He has no goals, no dreams, or whatnot. He simply sleeps and wakes up and accepts whatever life throws at him. This is not the way to live. Praying to God reveals your purpose to you. It brings you to the consciousness of why God created and brought you into this life. No one comes to this world by accident. Everyone is the product of God's thoughtfulness. And if God has put you where you are for a reason, the only way to find out the reason is to stay with God. When you spend time with God, you begin to understand the purpose for which God created you. And you start to run with that purpose. You begin to live a meaningful life. You have the drive to fulfill all God has planned for you. When you pray with intent, you gather the strength to avoid temptations. At different times in life, you will experience temptations. Temptation is simply the enticement to sin. It comes from the things you see and hear and the people you socialize with. Temptations come from different sources. When you yield to them, you sin against God and fall short of His glory. Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The sure way to avoid temptations is to watch and pray for the grace to resist those temptations. Your spirit man desires to resist those temptations, but it cannot because of the influence of the flesh. Praying without ceasing is the only way to suppress the flesh and avoid temptations. Praying with intent helps you to become more like Jesus. As believers, we ought to grow and become more mature in our walk with God as we progress in the faith. We should conform to Christ more as the days go by, and to be like Christ, some things need to be taken away from our lives. These things stunt our growth and keep us at the same level for so long. Jesus must become greater and I must decrease. This is the mindset of those who desire to be like Christ. You should grow to a point where your desire no longer matters to you. You only want Jesus to be glorified in your life. You desire that the will of God rules in your life. To grow to this point, you need to keep praying for God to work on your heart. This can only happen when you pray every day. Praying every day also gives you the opportunity to share all aspects of your life with God. When you pray, you can talk to God about everything that concerns you. You can talk to Him about the good and the bad. You can tell Him how happy you are about your wins and express your frustrations about your losses. Tell Him about your fears and the worries that keep you up at night. God is interested in listening to them all. And even beyond telling it all to Him, ask Him to help you. You can ask Him to give you strength and fortitude to fight through what lies ahead. You can also ask Him to make all your crooked paths straight and give you a testimony. This is what you stand to benefit when you pray to God every day. Praying every day also provides a platform to worship God. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 admonishes you to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When you pray, you have the privilege to praise and worship God for all the good things He has done in the past, all the good things He is doing now, and all the good things He is set to do in days to come. You can thank Him for His faithfulness that transcends generations. When you thank God, you spur God to do more for you. Worship moves the hand of God and paves the heavens open for an outpour of blessings upon you. So you should remember to worship God when you pray as it commands God's blessings upon you. Praying with intent every day brings miracles to your doorstep. Miracles describe divine intervention in seemingly impossible situations. Maybe you desire a job that you have a slim chance of getting or any of your loved ones are sick, or you need money to settle some outstanding debts, and you are starting to feel overwhelmed by your challenges. When you pray, God causes a change in your situation. He brings a turnaround. You get the job, your sick ones get healed, and He meets your needs. These things happen when you pray with intent every day. Lastly, praying daily with intent keeps the devil far away from you. Prayers strengthen the protection that God has placed around you. It prevents the enemy from harming you. When you pray, the angels of God around you stand at attention, ready to ward off every attack aimed at you. God protects you and everything that belongs to you. He keeps you in perfect peace because you have fixed your heart on Him. Now that you know how to pray, how often you should pray, 
and what happens when you pray with intent every day, you should get on your knees right this moment and start saying your prayers with every sense of intentionality. As you do, you will see things turning around for your good in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you encourage us to do more. God bless you. Amen. Every believer knows how important prayer is. We know that prayer is one of the pillars of our faith and that prayer is how we commune with our Father in heaven. It is how we communicate with Him and make our requests known. There are so many benefits of leading a prayerful life. Many of us desire to go deeper in prayer. We want to be more spiritual, and the way to achieve that is by being more prayerful. There are some of us whose goal in our journey with Christ this year is to pray more and have made this our divine assignment or task. If you've chosen to dive deeper into prayer this year, you're making one of the most impactful decisions of your life, and I am cheering for you. However, I am going to be honest with you on something. It won't be easy. There's an invisible enemy that would like nothing more than to stand in your way. He knows there is so much to be gained from being a prayerful person, and he is not going to let that happen. On some days, he will make you feel like you are not in the mood to pray. On others, he will demoralize you to stop praying because the prayers are not being answered fast enough. That is why today I want us to be encouraged by studying the benefits of praying consistently so that you can keep forging ahead with courage even when you don't feel like it. When you start praying constantly, you grow closer to God. Prayer is direct communication with God. It establishes, builds, and nurtures a relationship with Him. You will be filled with His Spirit who would reveal spiritual things to you and guide you to lead a godly life. He will become your helper, comforter, teacher, and friend. Eventually, you will start to move with confidence because you do not just have an idea, but you actually know who God is. When you begin to pray consistently, God becomes a part of your life. He's not just an idea at the back of your mind, but an actual being, your Father, who you involve even in the most trivial matters of your life. The voice of the Holy Spirit becomes clearer in your life. You begin to hear Him with confidence. You become familiar with the way He speaks, the way He operates, what He likes and dislikes. And this way, you find yourself closer to God more than ever. This also helps you become more obedient to Him and live out His will for you. Praying consistently enables you to hear more from God and be better able to align your actions with what you hear. For instance, when you are praying over a particular situation like a job or moving and receive direction from Him, you will have a heart that is willing to obey. When you pray consistently, your faith grows. When we hear about praying constantly, our minds are likely to think about unanswered prayers, and that is right, because it is in the face of challenges that it is the hardest to pray. No one has a problem with praying and thanking God when things are great. However, when things become tough and God seems unresponsive, this is when it is hardest to pray. That is also when we begin to doubt His presence and love for us and feel like we have been alienated from Him. At this same time, the devil comes at us with all manner of lies. However, if we keep our faith and continue to pray, not only will we become closer to God and obey His word, but also our faith will grow. Faith is like a muscle. The more we use it, the stronger it becomes. As believers, we should teach ourselves to trust harder, especially when we cannot see even a single reason to. We are supposed to pray harder the times we feel like giving up. It is by doing so that our faith in the Lord will grow. It is not when we are having it all easy, but when everything seems like it's falling apart. Staying in prayer when everything is seemingly going wrong in your life will grow your faith to heightened levels you never imagined. Also, praying without ceasing builds the character of Christ in us. You see, believers are the children of God. We belong to the heavenly royal family. We represent Christ here on earth, and we have been called to be more like Him day by day, moment by moment. We are supposed to be the salt and the light of the world, reflecting the light of Him who reconciled us with our Father, and that is Jesus Christ. Although we are not the source of that light, 
we are supposed to reflect it and shine it upon the whole world. Through prayer, this becomes possible and easy. We cannot be more Christ-like if we are not engaging Him in prayer. We cannot shine the light of Christ to the world if that light has not filled us first. We cannot follow in His footsteps if we are not yielding to His leadership. Prayer is how we ask Him to help us. It is how we put ourselves at the feet of Jesus and let Him guide us as we show the world the way to Him. When we pray, we ask for the Holy Spirit to fill us, to guide us, to enable us to be more like Christ so that the whole world can see Him through us. Consistent prayer in your life bears a lot of fruits. While teaching His disciples how to pray, Jesus told them in Matthew 6, 5 through 6, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Go into your room and close the door behind you. This means getting rid of distractions, doing away with the things that might pull us away from the presence of God, moving away from noise, and making sure that you are praying with the right motives. Prayer is not forgetting the attention or praise of man, but to glorify the name of God. This is a habit that every serious prayerful man or woman must have, making time to be in the presence of God all by yourself, without the presence of any person or electronic gadget. For prayer to be effective, we must be calm in the spirit, and physically too. Every believer must make this a consistent habit of their lives if they desire to get to intimate levels with God. When we do this, Jesus told his disciples that God, who sees what is done in private, will reward us. Prayer doesn't have to be loud for it to be effective. Not everyone must see that you are praying and crying. It is not about how loudly or long you do it for but all about the sincerity of your heart. What are your reasons for praying? Why do you wake up and go to morning glory? Why do you fast and spend your lunch hours in a secret place with the Lord? This is what Jesus is referring to when he says the God who sees what is done in private will reward you. God sees your motives. He knows your intentions. He knows why. Even though it may be hidden from men, he does and he will reward each person based on that hidden motive. In the parable of the widow and the unjust judge, while teaching about the importance of being consistent in prayer, the judge did not grant the woman her requests because he wanted to. He did not do it because he thought she deserved justice either. He gave her the justice she deserved so that she could stop being a nuisance to him. I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Luke 18, 4 through 5. Jesus is driving this point here. If this judge, as unjust, uncompassionate, and as unqualified for the job as he was, could grant the woman her requests because of her persistence, how much more will loving and holy Father give what is right to his children? When praying, we must know that results do not always show immediately. Our timelines are not the same as the Lord's. Persistent prayer requires tenacity and resilience. Daily, we will face many hurdles that may put a damper on our prayer drive. Life involves disappointment, loss, injustice, and persecution, all very good reasons to give up and lose hope. However, a life attuned to God's presence, justice, and goodness all covered by consistent, genuine prayer, is a life that can endure. This widow's persistence illustrates our need to pray without ceasing. Prayer changes us more than it changes the people around us. It deepens our faith and trust in God and empowers us to wait with hope for God to act. It's the reason why Jesus ended the parable to his disciples with a question of whether or not the Son of Man will find anyone faithful when he comes which is to say, as Eugene Peterson put it, will he find men and women who are still praying, who have not given up, who have not lost heart? The gospel of this passage challenges us not to just pray, but to trust in God. 
even when the answers that we seek do not come immediately? Will we have enough faith to endure until change happens? The Bible has so many examples of people that reaped great rewards from consistent prayer, from women like Hannah getting a son despite being called barren, the widow we have just studied about getting justice from the uncompassionate judge, to Paul and Silas being released from prison. With prayer, you will never go wrong because it opens so many doors. It is the door to infinite breakthroughs, opportunities, and blessings. The breakthrough you have been seeking, that specific thing that is constantly on your mind, could be just a prayer away. Do not give up on prayer. Great things happen when you pray without ceasing. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 17. Prayer is a perpetual exercise that all Christians perform. No doubt you've been praying for years. Even before you became an adult, prayer must be one of the fundamental lessons your parents taught you. So it has become part of your existence. When you wake up in the morning, you pray. Sometimes in the afternoon, you still pray. And of course, you won't sleep without a word of prayer to God. However, have you ever thought of this question? Why do we pray? Why is prayer a necessity? Is it possible to do without it? Absolutely not. Praying goes beyond asking and committing everything to God. Many Christians do not know the true meaning of prayer. Yes, prayer is a way of communicating with God. That's very true. However, have you ever looked closely at the word communicate? Many Christians don't notice this. Communication here means that it is the act of fellowshipping with God. When you pray, you're expected to know the heart of the Father. He wants to speak to you as well, not just you talking. Look at the lives of the men of old. Abraham would pray and God would speak with him. Have you been praying to know the heart of the Father? In truth, it's the only way that man knows to communicate with God. Since you are a tripartite being, prayers nourish your spirit. But there's more to prayers than that. While many believe that prayer is only a weapon of spiritual warfare, they believe that we should only pray when there's a problem. And when the problem is solved, we can stop praying until another arises. After all, God is a mighty man in battle. So just ask for his help during grievous seasons and enjoy the results. That's not how it ought to be. There's more to the act of prayer. The Apostle Paul admonished us to always pray in his letter to the Thessalonians. That simple injunction tells us that prayer is not an occasional event. Some Christians believe that praying is a form of religious activity. They attend numerous services every day to mark their prayer attendance and leave. They don't believe so much in establishing a relationship with God. They only see prayer as one of the things you must do to look like a Christian. But no, prayer is more than an activity. We see this exemplified in the life of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They keep prayer times. They go into the temple to observe them, but come out of the temple to live their normal lives. It doesn't mean more than that to them. There's no humility in their hearts when they pray, even though they bow their heads. That's not the kind of prayer you should indulge in. Prayer is more than an activity. Perhaps the reason why you think you should pray is to simply get your daily bread. That's you turning God into a baker. Once you get what you need, you run off. The 10 lepers cried to Jesus. They wanted him to cleanse them. He told them to wash in the Jordan River and go show themselves to the priest. They got their miracle, but only one remembered the source of the miracle. You are likely one of those nine. Praying is more than getting what you need. The question still lingers. Why should we pray? Jesus said in John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24, In that day you will no longer ask me everything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Jesus said you haven't asked for anything, but you've been praying. Perhaps you've not been asking for things of eternal value. Most of the prayers you pray are to acquire ephemeral things. They can't last long. A young man could spend hours praying just for a car. That doesn't have eternal value. Looking at the lives of the ancients in the Bible, you should pray for the following reasons. Don't be surprised that the first reason you should pray is for a clean heart. 
There's pollution in the world. Every day, sin is uprooting many from the presence of God. The devil perpetuates this by soiling their hearts. The presence of God must always be of utmost importance to you. However, you can't stay here unless you have a clean heart. King David understood this. He didn't ask for more chariots of war at this time. He didn't crave more women. Instead, he told God to create in him a pure heart. This should be one of the reasons why you pray every day. You must daily come to the presence of God with a clean heart. The Bible also says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we must always pray for God's mercy. Don't be high-minded when you approach the throne of God. Always come with a humble heart. God will not despise a broken and contrite heart. David knew this secret. Yes, he prayed for victories over his enemies, but more for a pure heart and for mercy. No wonder God called him a man after his own heart. Another reason why we should pray is to understand God's love for us. Many Christians still live the way of the flesh because they have not felt the weight of Christ's sacrifice. How can such a Christian love their neighbors? For a true Christian, it's a serious matter to lay before God in prayer. The elements of this present world don't want a man to love the Lord or his neighbor. The scripture affirms that in the last days, the love of many shall wax cold. The only way to keep your love for God on fire is to pray fervently about it. At the end of the day, what would matter in eternity is the love for God. To also avoid committing evil on the earth, you need the love of God reigning in your heart. We also need to pray for godly wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. We need godly wisdom in all that we do. Before embarking on any endeavor, God must be consulted. Before ascending to a position, godly wisdom is required. It's a pity that many believers thought that once an elevation comes, the next thing is to party with friends. You shouldn't do that. Instead, go to your closet and ask for God's wisdom to be bestowed upon you. Before David's death, he had appointed Solomon to rule in his stead. And when Solomon ascended the throne, he didn't consult the Psalms of his father. Instead, he went back to God to plead for wisdom. He didn't ask for riches, nor did he ask for victories over his foes. His only request was wisdom. God didn't only grant his request, but added riches and long life to it. The Bible records that there was no king like Solomon in wisdom. That's what God wants you to pray for. You don't have to become a king before you pray this. Living every day with others in your home, office, and the like also requires wisdom. Very close to wisdom is discernment. You need the ability to choose between right and wrong. You need the grace to make the right judgment. Do you think it's awkward to pray for this? No. In the book of Genesis, Abraham told his servant to journey back to his father's house and choose a wife for Isaac. The servant just couldn't depend on his knowledge. Therefore, he prayed. He told God that any woman who gave him water to drink and watered his camels should be the right woman. And that's exactly what happened. The servant made the right choice because he prayed for spiritual discernment. Are you also praying for discernment or only asking God for things? You should also pray for a greater measure of faith. Faith is the bedrock of every Christian. You need faith to seek the face of God continually. You need faith to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. Many believers backslide today because they lack faith in God to solve their problems. It's paramount that you pray to God to increase your faith. When your faith increases, you can decree and it will come to pass. You can speak to any mountain in your life to move into the sea. Pray for a strong faith like that of the three Hebrews. They saw not just any fire, but a fiery furnace, yet remained undaunted. God is willing to fill you with such faith as you pray. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 says, As you help us by our prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Most times your prayers are zoned only to yourself and your family. That shouldn't be so. You should pray for others as well. The Apostle Paul in this verse asked the brethren to pray for them as they continued the work of evangelism. 
Endeavor to remember the sick, orphans, and needy in your prayers. Commit missionaries into the hands of God. In short, pray for as many as you know. This is of great reward. The more you pray for others, the more God answers your prayers. Above all, always pray for the grace of God. God's grace does things you otherwise won't be able to do for yourself. God's grace can lift you to where you can't reach in 10 years. When you look at the life of Esther in the Bible, you'll realize that it was God's grace that took her to the palace. More grace came over her when she approached the king without permission. Always ask for God's grace and favor. Grace has nothing to do with your strengths or qualifications. Instead, it makes you qualified for things you never deserved. Even at that, you don't have to do anything to qualify for God's grace. All you need to do is pray for it. Now you see why we should pray. We shouldn't pray only because of our needs. We shouldn't approach God's throne because of our problems alone. Instead, we should pray for wisdom, discernment, faith, grace, and His peace. James chapter 4, verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. I admonish you to check your motives today before you pray. If worldly things still fill your prayers, God will not hear you. If your request is for your pleasure with no good to others, God will not answer your prayers. As you pray from now on, I implore you to pray in line with God's word and the betterment of others. You are one prayer away from your victory. Do you know that your next prayer might be the key to unlocking the breakthrough you've been seeking? Do you realize that the doors you have been knocking on in prayer may only need one more strike to be opened? God is about to change your life this season, and it will happen like a dream. Dear friend, God already has it all planned out, and His word to you today is that you are just one prayer away from your victory. So why not remain calm as you receive God's counsel today? You might have been knocking at heaven's door for a very long time without receiving a tangible response. You might be on the verge of giving up on God. There may have been moments when your strength failed, but here's the good news. God is intentional about you, and your prayers are not in vain. God will answer your prayers swiftly, surpassing your wildest imagination. Can you view your prayer as a time-bound investment? like a series of bank deposits that yield tremendous interest after compounding for a while. Your prayer goes beyond mere words from your mouth as a transaction between you and heaven, between God and you. Like a time-bound bank deposit, you may not see the results now, but it's definitely accumulating. Everyone who received answers in the Bible has their own stories of waiting. There is always a time in everyone's life when all they do is pray, there are moments when God seems to be silent but preparing our blessings. And there are seasons when God begins to move situations to align with the answers to our prayers. However, those seasons of waiting does not mean God isn't doing something. Jabez was burdened by a bad reputation for a very long time. His identity was tainted from birth as his mother had cursed him. Everywhere he went, he carried the mark of that curse. However, at some point in his life, he prayed, and there was a turnaround. The question is, how many times did he pray? Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, as mentioned in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. It doesn't seem like it was just once or twice. It was recorded that he prayed to God, and in the end, God answered him. The magnitude of your request might require several prayers, but one thing is certain. God will answer. Hold on to God as Jabez did. If you prayed about an issue yesterday, pray about it again today. Who knows if that prayer is the last prayer you'll need to pray to achieve victory. Keep praying and never stop because your next prayer might beget your testimony. Resilience is the place of prayer that can never be overemphasized. Jesus taught an interesting parable, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. His first example was about a widow who needed the assistance of an ungodly judge who feared neither God nor man. The widow, on her quest to get her properties back, kept on reaching out to him from time to time, boring him with her request. Initially, the judge was angry, ungodly, unaffectionate, 
and wicked, but after some time, he had to forget who he was in order to help the widow. Why? Because of her resilience. Most people stop praying over certain issues after their first attempt, thinking since there wasn't an answer the first time, there won't be an answer again. You can only imagine how many times this widow went to the judge's office for the singular case. She must have frustrated him with her requests, to a point where the man had no choice but to oblige at her request. The judge did not fulfill her request because he already got converted and became God-fearing. He decided to help her so he could be free from her constant troubles. Now, the point is, there is always a last attempt. You know for sure that the decision of the judge to become good must have been the decision he made on the last day the woman came crying at his office. What if she stopped going a day before? What if she gave up on her quest for justice? What if she didn't go that day? You need to understand that no matter how hard you have tried and labor in the place of prayer, until you receive your answer, you shouldn't stop. Do you know why? Nobody will celebrate with you because you prayed. You will only be celebrated when you get the victory. The second story in this parable depicts a situation where a man finds himself unexpectedly visited by a friend late at night. The mere thought of such a scenario brings forth a sense of confusion and disarray. Imagine someone arriving from a far-off place without any prior notice to spend time with you during the late hours of the night. As if the unexpected nature of the visit wasn't challenging enough, the man realizes that he has nothing to offer his guest. It's not just a matter of skipping dinner due to a scarcity of food. It goes beyond that. The guest, who must have endured an arduous journey, arrives at the man's doorstep seeking rest and comfort. This places an enormous burden on the man, as he realizes he cannot fulfill his guest's basic needs or provide the hospitality that such a weary traveler deserves. In this situation, the man faces a dilemma. He must grapple with the predicament of accommodating someone who, by all accounts, should be taken care of and made to feel welcome. Yet, he lacks the means to do so. The scarcity of resources intensifies the challenges he faces. Leaving him with a profound sense of helplessness and a mounting sense of obligation, towards his guest. Maybe he could have gone to stores to purchase food on credit, but the shops were closed, and he thought of a solution to his problem. The only option he had was his friend. You know the story, right? After knocking on his friend's door the first time, he could have given up and felt rejected. However, the reality that his only option was his friend kept him knocking. His friend gave him more than enough, not just because they were friends, but because of the persistence in his request. The question remains the same. What if he had stopped knocking at the first or second rejection? What if he had not given it one last try? You know the man was not aware that the last knock would make his friend open the door. He didn't know if his friend would ever open the door, but he was sure about one thing. He must receive his request. One important thing to note about the man in this parable is that he had no alternative. Perhaps the reason you don't persist in prayers is because you have other options. However, for this man, all his hope was on his friend, and he wouldn't leave until his request was granted. If you want to receive from God, kindly forget all your other options. Look unto him. Do not look to the left or right. Let your gaze be fixed on the prize of answered prayers, and you'll see how intentional God is about you and how quickly your prayers will be answered. Hannah attends Shiloh every year with the same bitter heart and prayer request. She needed what only God could do, and since she knew that, she didn't stop appearing in the presence of God every year. But one particular Shiloh, just like every other Shiloh, she went to prayer as usual to knock the doors of heaven open over her barrenness. And guess what? She got her answer. It would have felt like a dream when the high priest intervened in her case. Eli answered, Go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17. The statement would have been so surreal to Hannah on that day. There would have been a confirmation in her heart immediately after she heard that declaration from Eli. She stood up happily, not as a barren woman, but as the mother of a prophet, judge, and kingmaker. Sometimes when you reply, it takes longer than expected. You must know God is cooking up something very special for you. Ishmael might come without prayers, but it takes dangerous faith to bring Isaac 
into existence. Your miracle is not just a random one. Your victory is in the general one you see everyone testify about. What God is doing in your life is special and beyond what the human system can comprehend. It takes time for the best to come, but most importantly, it takes great faith to make the best happen. That faith can be traced to how often you can keep praying until you receive. How much you can ask until you receive. Seek until you find. And knock until it's opened. Don't give up. You're almost there. The prayers will soon become testimonies. The tears will soon lead to stories of victory. And the labor will soon lead to harvest. But you must be constant at it. You must not stop now. You must persist. Your answer is close. Jesus asked a question in the Bible. He asked if a father among the ungodly men around him would give his child a stone instead of bread or a snake instead of a fish. He concluded that if an ungodly father wouldn't do that, the God of heaven would never neglect the prayers of his children. Though it might take time, it will happen. Though it might not have happened before now, the Lord says, now is the time. He's about to show up for you beyond your expectations. The only thing you can do is to pray again knock again it might be the last strike your miracle is almost by your side the red sea is about to be parted don't stop lifting your rods of prayers to god if you don't do it no one else will help you so do it now keep doing it and god will answer your prayers speedily you're just one more step away from your breakthrough you're just one prayer away from getting that dream job of yours, and you're just one more faith prayer away from getting that divine healing you've been waiting for. So why knock as though it's your last? Why not give it a try again? Why not check through that prayer request list of yours again? Why not go on your knees again and pour out your heart to your Heavenly Father? No later time is best for it but now. Right now is the best time to knock on the doors of heaven through prayers. Do it now. Don't procrastinate. Watch how God changes your life when you fight to pray daily. Is it possible to live a life free from bondage, a life that constantly experiences peace and radiates with joy? You might find yourself asking this question. Well, it is possible. God wants you to live a victorious life in Him. He desires that you be in control of everything He created, which was the primary reason He formed you. However, not every believer enjoys this reality. This is sad but true. Only through a life of consistent prayers can you become everything that God has called you to be. This is why you must fight for a life of daily prayers. As you engage in these prayers, watch how God shapes your life in ways you never thought possible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray continually. According to this scripture, prayer should be the lifestyle of every believer. Your life gets more organized by creating and sticking to routines. And as you keep up with these routines, they develop into a habit. These habits then become what rules your life. To create a lifestyle of prayer, you must have a time that you set up to communicate with God daily. It might not be as convenient as seeing a movie or hanging around with friends, but it will influence your life positively. To live this Christian life to the fullest, you must learn to create a habit around prayer. Here is what a life of prayer will do for you. Firstly, a life of prayer is what God wants you to have. In the beginning of creation, the Bible shows us how God always loved to fellowship with man until there was separation through sin. Yet God sought a way to reconcile us to Him and did this through Jesus. A man was created to be in fellowship with God. This is why a life void of this relationship will experience chaos. It won't see the fulfillment that it wants. Therefore, to enjoy God's divine presence, you should fellowship daily with Him. It is beautiful to have a place to confront your fears, challenges and doubts head on. All these can only happen in the place of prayers it is also from this fellowship that you assess the blessings God has for you. This blessing includes living a life of victory. As you pray, you are empowered to live above life's challenges. The truth is that life will always challenge you. At every phase in life, you will always meet hurdles. Moreover, the 
person of prayer will maintain peace and remain unmoved in the face of troubles. Daniel was a man of prayer. He recorded a routine of praying three times daily. When there was a decree by the king that no one should bow down to any god except him, he still didn't stop his prayers because it had become a lifestyle. This was why he could boldly face them and not compromise his faith. He was thrown into the lion's den, and the lion didn't hurt him. How about the three Hebrew men that were thrown into the fire? How could a man exercise such dominion that even the forces of nature obey them? It is amazing to see that such men exist. They didn't do anything extraordinary other than give themselves to a life of prayers. You must exercise your dominion at every point you find yourself in life. You cannot continue to be oppressed by sickness or a limited mindset. Therefore, if you want to exert dominion in that office, your business, or wherever you find yourself, you must learn to pray daily. Amazing transformation occurs in your life when you dedicate effort to pray daily. You'll experience firsthand the power and influence of God in your life. Prayer connects us with God's divine nature and supernatural powers. Also, through this consistent and sincere communication with God, you can experience spiritual growth. Prayer transforms your life as an individual and those around you, like families, communities, and even the world. You can boldly walk up to a person you have no relationship with to ask for their help. It is the same when relating to God. Boldness only comes from the place of intimacy. Let us consider the story of the prodigal son. After squandering his inheritance, he wasn't bold enough to meet his father for help. He was expecting that his father would accept him as a servant, but thankfully, he found grace in the sight of his father. This points to us that God always wants to help us, but whenever we lose our boldness to approach God, we deny ourselves our rights as children of God. Why should you have a father who owns heaven and the earth and you live as a pauper? Why have so much abundance but live a life contrary to what God has given you? This is indeed unfair. Do not allow the devil to steal from you when he is constantly discouraging you from praying. Always spend time in God's presence to develop a strong relationship. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. God wants to make provisions for your needs. He wants to give you the desires of your heart, but you can only assess your answers in prayer. You must learn to put before God what you need. This is one of the important things about having daily time with God. Do not think that there is anything impossible for God to do. Unlike men who grow weary of your complaints, God can never forget your prayers. He has promised to always show up when you call out to Him. Another reason you need to fight to pray daily is that His mercies are new every morning. This means that each day, there is new hope. There is hope that you are closer to your prayers than before. If you didn't receive what you requested yesterday, you can receive them today. Today is a new day promised with the newness of God's mercy. You can't depend on yesterday's strength to fight today's battles. You must keep reaching out to God to enjoy His mercy daily. For every challenge that you face, there is a way to sort it out in the place of prayer. Challenges are not always bad. Some challenges are just a means to unlock the breakthrough ahead of you. Hence, you must trust God for wisdom and direction on what to do. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15 says, The toil of fools wearies them. They do not know the way to town. Anyone who does not have a clear direction on what to do will keep laboring in vain. If you keep going around in circles, it might be because you are unclear on what to do or even how to do it. Nevertheless, you can move from a state of confusion to a place of clarity in prayers. Daniel could tell the king a dream he had with its interpretation because he was a man of prayer. You might have been trusting God for clarity and direction concerning your life as you pray God will begin to reveal things to you. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, he said, Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. This is your inheritance in Christ. God wants to show you the secret things. He wants to give you an idea that will change your life for good, but only a prayerful man can receive them. Have you ever experienced a nudge in your spirit that greatly saved your life? For instance, if there is a restriction to go to a particular location, it could be God protecting you from harm. 
This nudge comes from the Holy Spirit. However, only those who are sensitive will listen and obey. A life of prayer will make you sensitive to the Spirit's leading. Some mistakes can be dangerous to their lives, but the nudges in your spirit can prevent you from making these mistakes. Will you spend time in God's presence today and let Him lead you on how you should go? Moreover, the closed doors you've been experiencing might be due to your prayerlessness. Prayer is the key that has the potential to unlock closed doors. Even when faced with seemingly insurmountable barriers, when you turn to prayer, you are tapping into a higher power or divine presence that accompanies you everywhere you go. It truly pays to commune with God. A prayerful life is such that daily experiences signs and wonders. You would begin to operate in the supernatural. You would do things you never knew you could and enjoy the joy that comes with God's presence. Beloved, if you're yet to cultivate the habit of consistent prayer, you're missing out. I encourage you to start today. When you are a man or woman of prayer, having faith in God won't be difficult. A man of prayer is a man of faith. Your faith will be intimidating to others simply because you've experienced God in so many dimensions that you can't but sleep while the storm is raging because you are more than confident God's got you. Prayer is a supernatural way to experience the divine presence of God. It is always a time of refreshing when communicating with God. There is a peace that floods your heart. This peace depends not on the happenings around you, but on the assurance that God is with you. Above all, Jesus didn't leave us to figure out how to pray without teaching us. He taught the disciples how to pray and sent the Holy Spirit to enable us to pray. Prayer is a spiritual exercise that can't be done by merely wishing it. It has to be done by enablement. This is why the Holy Spirit lives in every believer. He is there to teach and help you. You don't have to struggle to pray. He can guide you. Even when you don't know what to say, He grants you utterance. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, The Spirit of holiness will come upon you. You shall receive power. Pray more in the Spirit as it helps you build on your most holy faith. It helps cover up your weakness in prayers. We might not always have the right words to say in the place of prayers, so the Spirit makes intercession for us and begins to reveal what we need to know. Although a daily prayer can form into a routine, prayer is more than a routine but a continuous fight for transformation. Because as you keep praying, you become more like God. Spending time in fellowship with God helps your spirit to bear fruit. This fruit is needed to live effectively and relate well with people. You can show love to people even if they hurt you. You can be patient when life seems tough. What more do you need to live a wonderful life than a life of prayers? As you give yourself to a life of prayers, may God cause everything to work in your favor, and may you never become prey in the hand of the devil. Amen. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Maybe you heave a deep sigh, press the snooze button, and wish you didn't have to get up. But when you eventually rise from your bed, do you go about your day right away? Or do you spend time in prayer with God? Morning prayer often goes overlooked in our busy lives, but it can be life-changing for your walk with God. When you begin your day with God, you're reminded of who you are. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Every breath you take is a gift from the Lord, and it's important to remember that. The Lord created us in His image, and He loves us and cares for us. We are His sheep, and He is our shepherd, leading us and protecting us. If we don't put God first, we may end up taking Him for granted. If we don't acknowledge that all we have and all we are is from Him, we may think that we're in charge of ourselves. We may begin to think that we have power when really everything we have is because of God's power. We may begin to think that we don't need Him, but that would be a lie. We would be nothing without Him. The Israelites consistently took the Lord for granted while traveling through the wilderness. They witnessed the power of the Lord when He parted the Red Sea to allow them to cross and rid themselves of their Egyptian enemies. And yet when they became hungry, they wished that they had never left Egypt at all. They said that they wished they had died in Egypt rather than to starve in the wilderness. 
But the Lord was never going to let them starve. He didn't lead them out of Egypt for them to simply die elsewhere. He promised to care for the Israelites, and that's exactly what he did. When they complained of starvation, he sent manna and quail from heaven to fill their bellies. When they complained of thirst, God produced water from a rock. But when they finally reached the land of the Amorites that the Lord had already promised them, they rebelled against him once again. Spies were sent into the land, and when they came back with an unfavorable report, the Israelites doubted God's power to deliver them from these enemies. They saw that the Amorites were bigger and stronger than they were, and they were afraid to go against them. Moses said to the people, Do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you, as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a father carries his son, all the way until you reached this place. Yet the Israelites didn't listen to Moses' words and continued to doubt God. The Lord became angry at them and denied that generation of Israelites from entering the Promised Land. They were punished for taking God and His power for granted. They followed Him when it was easy to do so, but as soon as difficulty struck, they turned away from Him. Even though God had cared for them time and time again throughout great trials, they doubted that He would and could continue to do so. Instead of relying on the Lord and His great power, the Israelites tried to rely on themselves and saw a battle that they could not win. With God, anything is possible, but the Israelites turned away from Him. We sometimes turn away from God when our lives become difficult as well, but it is during those times that we need Him the most. That's why it's so important to begin every day with the Lord. We must be reminded time and time again that we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Him, and He will care for and protect us at all times. No matter what we encounter, we are never fighting on our own. Every breath is from the Lord. Every step we take is granted by Him. Our skin and bones have been beautifully crafted by Him. On our own, we are nothing, but with God, we can be anything. We are God's children, and we can rest safely in His arms. When we remember that we are children of God, we can also be reminded of what we've been put on earth to do. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Jesus tells His disciples, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. God has given all of His people this same instruction. We have been placed on this earth to spread God's glory and share the Word. When you begin your morning, pray to the Lord that He will give you the strength and courage that you need to fulfill His will. Ask Him to give you the right words in every situation and to help you be a good example of Jesus. No matter what you do or where you are, you can spread God's glory. We are representatives of God on earth, and we must act like it. In everything we do, we must do it for the glory of God. This also means that we must act like Jesus and follow the old adage, what would Jesus do? For example, if someone cuts you off in line, instead of yelling at them, you could remind yourself once again that you are God's child. Pray for patience and give them a smile. It won't be easy, but with God, it will be possible. Morning prayer can also remind you of where you're going. When we worship the Lord and dedicate ourselves to Him, we will receive the greatest possible reward, a place in heaven beside our Father. As Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you begin your day with prayer, you are immediately setting your mind on things above. And when you start your day that way, it's easier to continue focusing on things from above throughout the day. When you thank God for the breath in your lungs, you're focusing on His wonderful gift of life. When you ask God to provide you with safe travels, you're acknowledging that everything is in His capable hands. When you pray for sustenance, you aren't focusing on the food itself, but the blessing that it is when God provides it. On the surface, these may appear to be physical things, but when we acknowledge that everything comes from God, we are focusing on things above. As James chapter 1, verse 17 says, 
every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Everything we have comes from God, and we must always remember that. We must thank Him daily for all of the gifts He has provided for us. When you wake up acknowledging God's gifts, it's easier to view your day through a righteous lens. We're not on earth to store up meaningless treasures, but to spread God's glory and receive a place in heaven. We must place our focus on our end goal of receiving God's eternal reward instead of smaller earthly goals that will mean nothing in the end. Even if our earthly treasures bring us temporary pleasure, that pleasure will not last forever. It'll eventually fade away and you'll be left with nothing. But when you live for the Lord, you'll receive the kind of eternal life that means everything. When you begin your day thinking of heaven, you can continue putting your thoughts on things above throughout the day. Morning prayer can also be a great way to remind yourself you've gotten the wonderful gifts God has promised, including a place in heaven. The very fact that we can pray to the Lord and trust that He will hear us is significant in and of itself. Heaven is far removed from earth, but when Christ died for us, He became a mediator between us and God, allowing us to communicate with Him anywhere, anytime. Jesus' death bridged the gap between heaven and earth and enabled us to gain a place with our Heavenly Father, not through our own righteousness, but through His. Jesus sacrificed His earthly life so that we could gain life in heaven. When God looks at us, He no longer sees our sin and wickedness because we've been covered in Jesus' righteousness. There's nothing you and I could ever do to earn a place in heaven on our own, but we have one thanks to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. When we end our prayers in Jesus' name, we're reminded of the reason we can pray in the first place. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus lived a perfect life and died a painful death because he loves his people and wants them to join him in heaven. When you begin your day with prayer, you are reminding yourself of who you are, what you've been placed on earth to do, where you're going, and how you've received the abundance of gifts that the Lord has blessed you with. Morning prayer will help you set your sights on God and things above right away so that you can continue focusing on Him throughout the day. To begin your day with God is to begin your day right. You will find yourself wanting to please God in all that you do because you've been reminded of the amazing things He has done for you and blessed you with. You are an ambassador for Christ on earth and your actions should reflect that. You are a child of God who has been placed on earth to spread the word and share God's glory. And one day when your job on earth is done, you'll join our Father in heaven because Jesus' sacrifice has cleansed you of your sin to allow you to be covered in His righteousness. If you haven't been practicing morning prayer, begin doing so now. Before you even get out of bed, spend time with God and watch how it affects your walk with Him.